Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more. Welcome to Pepper Shock Media's Marketing Expedition Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in marketing and advertising. Now, here's your host, Ray Allen. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Today, I'm going to introduce our special guest. His name is Terry Hansen. And after working several years for big corporations, Terry decided the time was right to venture off on his own and start his first marketing consulting business in 2005. However, after a few years, the Great Recession of 2008 arrived. He lost all of his clients and struggled to find new ones. He eventually ran out of money and had to close the business just after two short years. Terry was forced to reinvent himself and start a new business from scratch. He worked with coaches and learned through trial and error how to make a living in the worst economic recession in decades. Oh, I remember that all too well. Uh, <laughs> Terry earned his first six-figure income at the end of 2009, just as many businesses were filing for bankruptcy or being bailed out by the government. Today, Terry is the president of the Hanson Group Company, a sales performance improvement firm, and trains business owners and their sales teams how to increase sales in good and bad economic times. He's the creator of Hanson University, an online training platform that has been called the Netflix of sales, marketing and professional development training. Terry conducts about 300 lectures, trainings and speeches each year, and has been recognized with several awards for his outstanding achievements. And he has authored several articles for industry magazines and produced over 80 hours of online training courses for sales professionals and sales managers, of which I have watched at least some of those hours. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry and his wife have five children. You're very busy right now. <laughs> and they live in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Please help me welcome Terry Hansen to the show. Welcome, Terry. Oh, man. So good to be here. Thanks for having me on, Ray. Sure, a big fan of all that you and your team are doing these days. So it's a privilege and a pleasure to be with you. Well, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, we, we got some training from, from you too, Terry, for, for my sales team. So it's good to have you on the show and get to share some of your knowledge and wisdom with, with our, our listeners. And uh, so, yeah, I think um, let's, let's just get started with a, a basic question here. Uh, why do you love cold calling, Terry? <laughs> well, I hate cold calling. <laughs> I, I, I hate it, I, uh, but I, I tell you, uh, because I hate it, um, it was one of the primary things that helped save my bacon in the last recession, uh, frankly, because I didn't have any money for marketing and advertising, and I didn't know all of the fancy strategies that exist today, so I had to rely on just the old-fashioned stuff that's phone. worked for decades, right? But it was terrible. It, it was hard. Uh, and, and so because of that, I was forced to turn something that I hated and something, frankly, that I wasn't very good at into something by sheer necessity, mm -hmm. into something that I could, I could find clients with. And it, uh, through trial and error and school of hard knocks and, and actually through some coaching and mentoring uh, from some people that I care deeply about, um, I was over the years able to develop kind of a six step framework, uh, kind of like a recipe for mm -hmm. turning terrible, miserable, scary, horrible cold <laughs> calls actually into something that work and work pretty darn good. And so it's, uh, and they do. Uh, uh, so it, 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 it does make a difference when you have a little recipe uh, mm -hmm. and some steps that you can follow uh, that really have been proven over time to work and work well. Uh, have something like that to help turn something as miserable and terrible as cold calls into right. something that worked work pretty well. So <laughs> that's the only reason why I like cold calling is <laughs> because there's a recipe to make them work. Uh, mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Once Everything you, else about them is terrible. 
So. Dial that in. <laughs> See that, what I did there? <laughs> when you dial it in and you get good at it and you get past the gatekeepers and you, you know, make sure that you listen to the pain points. And I listened to your class. I know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Yep. So, so who is your ideal client? If you were able to call somebody up that would be the most ideal customer and they said yes, who, who is that person? Well, um, it, it's been an evolving thing over the years, but in the last five years, I've really come to know uh, and appreciate the business owner, the entrepreneur. And, and this is the kind of person, the guy or the gal who is already, frankly, very successful in business. They're already running a business that's probably doing one to say $10 million in revenue. I think of uh, a great software uh, company out of Florida called Shopworks. They create a software for printing companies. So if you're in embroidery or if you do screen printing and that sort of thing, uh, they create a, a software that helps on the, the, the order, uh, the system mm -hmm. ordering and the back office management of all those orders. Well, they're wonderful and Jay is the business owner and uh, he came to me years ago with a, a small team, less than a dozen employees, crushing it, making, I don't know, five million or so a year, doing great. Mm -hmm but he was really the bottleneck in the business. He realized that because his hands were in all aspects of the business. He couldn't effectively be the sales manager. He mm -hmm. couldn't effectively be the director of marketing. He wore all these different all hats. All the hats, all of the things, yeah. And, and any business owner running, you know, doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight million dollars in revenue knows exactly what that's like. They yeah. wear tons of hats, so mm -hmm. much is required of them. They can't be all things to all people. And so they kind of take one of two paths. Either A, they realize I need to delegate and, 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 and outsource more sections mm -hmm. of this business to others, or I need to hang on to this piece myself. So what I quickly identified or determined was the skills and experience that I have and the resources that I possess, I can, I can help those types of business owners, A, become better at wearing those one or two hats that they just are passionate about mm -hmm, when it mm -hmm. comes to sales or marketing or, or that sort of thing. Or uh, I can help train and support those people that they delegate that to, uh, those responsibilities to, so that they can thrive and really do good. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what we did with, uh, with Shopworks and they've, they've gone on to do some really, really great things. But, but when I think of my ideal client, I think of I think of business owners who <laughs> are wearing those kinds of hats, mm -hmm. wrestling with those kinds of issues and, and fighting those battles. So. so do you actually do sales for people? Do you do business development for companies or do you mostly train those who do the sales for the company? Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't provide an outsourced sales service. Mm -hmm. where I do the cold calling for my clients or I do the selling or closing for my clients. I don't, I know many companies do. I think it's a cool business model, but that's not what, uh, mm -hmm. that's not what I ultimately do. My core business ultimately is, is coaching, training, and consulting. Very good. Very good. Speaking of what you've evolved your business into, what are some things that you do to get new business in the door? For your own, oh, the sales yeah. person selling the sales, right? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Well, I, I tell you that it really doesn't matter what I do, uh, but I'm happy to share that with you. But what what matters the most is is how well you know your client, uh, your ideal client, where their attention is, where they spend their time, and you're doing things to get to them. So for me in my world with the, with the businesses that, that I'm focused on, it makes a lot of sense for me to focus on, uh, on having a podcast or a show. I have a YouTube channel, a YouTube show called The Terry Hansen Show. And so it makes sense for me to have a platform where I can teach and educate and bring on guests of my own and things like that, mm -hmm. and then distribute that content far and wide on social media and through email. So the first kind of tactic that I am using in my business is, is first off having a platform, mm -hmm. uh, a, a video show uh, that creates content and that sort of thing. So that's the first one. The second one is email marketing. Um, nothing, nothing happens in direct response marketing without a list. And so you've mm -hmm. got to, 
work to build a list, whether you buy a list or earn a list or borrow someone else's list, you've got to have a list mm -hmm. of people, a targeted people that fit your kind of ideal client demographic that you're communicating to frequently. So using uh, all the best of, of email marketing strategies mm -hmm. uh, and having good headlines and subject lines, having good body copy and content, good calls to action, things that uh, do uh, entertain your audience about 90% of the time and talk business and, and that sort of thing. 10% of the time is, is pretty critical. So email marketing would be a second. And then third and final is influencer marketing as well as affiliate marketing. So having other well-known uh, gurus and experts uh, promote me to their audiences or even having affiliates, those business owners uh, and uh, companies who have databases of, of, of customers and clients who match my ideal client, have them market and promote me as well. So those are kind of the three legs marketing legs that I stand on, uh, you know, having a show or a platform, email marketing, as well as affiliate marketing. So, but that works for me, but that might not be the magic recipe for everybody on the planet, but those three happen to speak very, very well to my target audience. Because as we go on our marketing journeys and we discover new ways of doing things, this is good for people to know how, you know, marketers market their own company, you know? Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> kind of peeling back and how, how it happens. So. Let's talk a little bit more about the influencer marketing affiliate. I was putting those two words together, but how has it worked for you? Have you done that before? And what kind of talk, walk me through what you did and how did it happen? And, uh, you know, if you've got maybe a success story in what occurred for you. Well, so maybe just to quickly define the difference between influencer marketing and affiliate marketing. They're not the same. They're, they're, they are different. I influencer marketing is where you have a celebrity, a big fancy pants, somebody who's an expert, a guru, somebody really, really smart. They've got their own shows, their own books, their own national and international following on, on all the you know social media platforms. Anytime that they are talking about you, your brand, your products and services, and, uh, and getting their audiences to click on your links or go to they're your website or subscribe you, to you. Basically. Yeah, they're endorsing you, right? Yeah, endorsing <laughs> you, exactly. That's influencer marketing, and, and that's great. Um, there's all sorts of creative ways that you can leverage influencer marketing. Uh, so, but anyway, that's that. Now, affiliate marketing is a different animal. Uh, affiliate marketing, as I kind of alluded to, is any person or any company that may not be a celebrity. They may not have books and courses and movies and be Olympians and you know the fancy pants uh, people of the world. They, they, they might not be, but they're just good, you know, hardworking individuals or companies that happen to have a big database of customers or clients or contacts that they're happy to promote you to that list. So, you know, think newspaper agencies, how many addresses do they have of of subscribers to their their newspaper. Well, th tens of thousands, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if they were to promote you via email or via direct mail to their audience, that's a good thing. So that would be an example of affiliate, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a joint venture. They're just good companies just like you. So uh, as a simple example, um, we've got uh, of how I've how I've used it and what's mm -hmm. what's uh, what's been working lately is we have uh, here in the Southeast Idaho area, uh, a business incubator space called the Idaho Innovation Center. And uh, Brian Magleby is the director, executive director over that. And he invited me on as a guest to talk about uh, the, the, re the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the negative impact that it's been having on businesses and what businesses can do to really not only just survive but thrive in this crazy new recession that we're in and so he invited me on for, uh, on on to a webinar uh, he invited all the people in his database to come and there were I don't know uh, I, I'm not sure how many people showed up but there were quite a few mm -hmm. and I spoke for I don't know 30 minutes and talked about six different things and and after it was over it uh, you know it he recorded it and then he sent an email out to his database uh, telling people about this masterclass or this course that I have. Mm -hmm. Well, that day after he sent that email out, um, I had like a I had like a dozen people immediately sign up just from his one email. Mm -hmm. 
Fantastic. And, and, and a dozen people is not that many and it doesn't sound that great, but how much money did that cost me in marketing and advertising? It cost me zero. Right, uh, just so, your time and expertise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I was able to leverage hit, uh, the Idaho Innovation Center mm -hmm. as an affiliate to me um, in getting additional people to register for some of the things that I'm working on. Right. And so that, that simple example is, it's very simple, very basic, but, but the idea is one that frankly, anybody can duplicate in pretty much any industry uh, out there. Speaking of what you're working on, tell us more. What is this masterclass all about? What is it that you're doing? How are you helping people? And uh, what's, what's happening for you? I, I, well, I'm having a little bit of a deja vu moment <laughs> here in 2020 with this COVID-19 recession. Uh, as you alluded to in, my, in, my, in, the, in your introduction, I, I went bankrupt and I lost my very first c consulting business oh, yeah. back in 2007. And I was just two years old as a business owner. I thought I knew everything. I was cocky and arrogant as I'll get out. Uh, and I, and I, um, it, when that recession hit, as, as you mentioned, it put me right out of business. Mm -hmm. And it was a very scary and difficult time. I was been married at that point for, I don't know, five, uh, seven years, had three little kids uh, that uh, needed their dad to, you know, put mm -hmm. food on the table. And I didn't have a single way of doing that. But um, I got to uh, pick myself back up by the bootstraps a little bit, reinvented myself and, and, and started from scratch, created a, another company. And I immediately got a mentor and a coach. His name's Gary Harvey. Uh, he lives in Denver, Colorado. Actually, he recently this uh, last week passed away oh. of cancer. And Sorry, so yeah. But he, uh, he taught me some pretty powerful things. And as I got started in business number two, mm -hmm. uh, through trial and error and his, his, his guidance, mm -hmm. I was able to figure out what works and doesn't work in a recession to boost sales and grow income. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, yeah, 2009 was a banner year for me and income has grown ever since then. Obviously it's been a good economy, but the coming full circle now back in 2020 where there's over 30 million people who've filed for unemployment and where people are out of work and, mm -hmm. you know, gross uh, GDP is way down and, and all the economic and financial gurus are saying we're in this for another 12 to 18 months minimum. It's crazy to think we're right back where I kind of started. And right. so I just simply want to be the kind of coach and mentor and support and lifeline that Gary Harvey was to me during a, a crazy economic time. So uh, coming full circle, mm -hmm. I uh, starting about a month and a half, two months ago, uh, when this really first started, I saw the writing on the wall mm -hmm. and I knew that there was gonna be some blood in the streets. And I knew that this is gonna be, this is, these are going to be very difficult times. Right. And so I put together a master class, a six part mm -hmm. master class. Uh, called How to Thrive in Business During the COVID-19 Recession. And it's basically a six-week masterclass that goes over 14 frameworks or structures or systems dealing with operations, dealing with marketing, uh, dealing with sales, dealing with a customer retention, and even, even focusing on personal development that will build a solid foundation and help businesses not just skirt by or, or just survive, but, but actually Th thrive in this type of economic environment. So that's really what the master class is all about. So long answer to a short question. No, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think uh, the more we can educate and help, you know, our, our potential customers, right? I mean, then the more they trust us, the more expertise you can share. And, you know, if you've been there and done that, um, then, you know, they're going to see how valuable you can be to them. So that's, that's good. There's, a, there's just a lot of lessons that are being repeated now. I mean, this this reception, recession is fundamentally different than what it was like in 2008. Uh, however, there's still a lot of commonalities. Mm -hmm. And what worked then is, is actually working like a champion right now. And okay. so that's why I want to uh, share this masterclass far and wide with as many people mm -hmm. as can get their hands on it. So anyway. No, oh, that's good. And everyone has to sell every day, whether or not you are in business business development or in sales, everyone at the company sells every day. And it may not just be cold calling, but it could be a number of different things, but, or supporting the salespeople who do sell, but without them, you don't exist. And without marketing, you don't exist. So I always That's try to true. tell people the, the, 
even though it's the first thing that people want to cut, it's, it's the very last thing that they should be cutting. They just need to shift and leverage and, you know, utilize the, the talent that they have within them and their, their staff and their culture that they have. So I support, you know, continuing oh, yeah. to, to, you know, get your pipeline filled with good, uh, <laughs> good quality leads in the future. Right. And, and it's unfortunate because it, it really is in some cases for some businesses that are, you know, either they're booming or they're bombing. And if they're bombing, their pipelines froze up overnight, right? With COVID. And so now it's really trying to come back from COVID and refilling that pipeline again and, you know, getting people to, to buy from you again and feel comfortable with doing it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So what are some things that you're telling your, your current customers right now that uh, you've been able to, you said you mentioned some, some things that you, you've shared. What are, what are maybe some three things that you ha have been telling them to, that you, they can do right now if they don't have necessarily the money to, to market or advertise? What are, what are some things that you've been sharing? So clients who don't have a lot of cash right now to market and promote themselves, um, uh, selfishly, like first off, um, I, I think they need to have two legs to stand on. Uh, the first is outbound sales prospecting. This is uh, these good old fashioned efforts using social media, uh, using messenger, using email, and using the telephone, and uh, and even using you know direct mail, snail mail, to uh, to reach out directly to companies, introduce yourself and strike up conversations and, and start the process there. Uh, it takes work and, and creativity, but it doesn't take money to do outbound sales prospecting. But that's the okay. first leg, certainly, to stand on. The second leg is, is something, a, a fancy term called inbound marketing. And many have heard that term, but so much of inbound marketing is 100% free. You don't need money to, to invest or spend necessarily to make inbound marketing work and work very well for you. It does take time, it does take work, and it does take creativity, but it doesn't take money. Now, if you have a budget and you can spend money, well, you can pour on the gas and, uh, and really amplify how your inbound marketing is, is working. But those are really, right now, those are the two legs that companies need to be standing firm on, uh, is inbound marketing and, and outbound sales prospecting. Um, so uh, anyway, I yeah, that's firm great. believer on both of those. Okay, so you mentioned your mentor. Let's talk about him a little bit more. How did he inspire you? How did he? What are what are some things he did to to really help you during that time frame? Uh, two things. Two things really come to mind. He had uh, he had what he called uh, periodically. He uh, he encouraged me to increase my batting average. Uh, I was a gymnast growing up, and so that's why I'm so short. <laughs> and can still tumble and do backflips today, but uh, I did play a little bit of baseball, you know, in little league as a, as a kid. But I was never a really great baseball player. But so when he said you need to increase your batting average, I knew what that meant: mm -hmm. uh, I increasing the number of times that you're actually hitting a home run and that sort of thing. But BAT was an acronym that he talked about a lot. B stands for behaviors, A stands for attitude, and T stands for technique or techniques and he talked about behaviors as being the habits and the routines that we do every day so if you want to make more money if you want to increase your sales what habits or routines or patterns of behavior do you need to change each day to increase the likelihood that that's going to work do you need to wake up earlier do you need to go to bed later do you need to spend more time doing some things do you need to stop doing certain things do you need to start doing certain things so he talked about behaviors. Uh, he also talked about attitudes and mindset. Um, how we, what, what terrifies us. I mean, all of us are, have fears and insecurities. Mm -hmm. All of us have weaknesses, but how we think about ourselves, our own self-esteem, uh, how we think of others, uh, our emotional empathy, uh, all of that plays a role in how we approach the day and how confident we are in what we do. But he also talked about techniques. I mean, the skills that we have. He talked about how important it is to refine and master selling skills. Do it a thousand times so that you can never get it wrong. You know, even at the spur of the moment, in the heat of the moment, when the pressure's on, you don't screw up. And like Michael Jordan and all the great athletes are excellent examples of that. When the heat is on, when the pressure's on, 
because you've practiced that three point shot a thousand times, you can't miss. And so he's a huge proponent of that. And so he really forced me to refine basic skills, check my head and rearrange my activities during the day. And it was really those three things that help, uh, help set me on a course to get some very different results. So I think that was, I think that was the first one is uh, nice. improving my batting average. <laughs> yeah. Fact. And I think the third uh, the, or the second one is he had this phrase called, uh, he would always encourage me to plant my feet and stand my ground, hmm. plant my feet, stand my ground. Um, this was again, during this recession when everybody and their dog was discounting prices when was doing things for free and you know businesses didn't have a lot of money so they didn't want to spend a lot of money and it drove him nuts to have me or anybody else any of those other clients uh, offer discounts mm -hmm. and so he right. says you you have to know your value and you have to charge what you're worth if you discount your products and services and offer price concessions all you're telling your ideal, your, your prospective buyer is that you're not worth it, mm -hmm. that your value is less than what it is. And he actually encouraged me during that recession to raise my prices, to increase the cost, I increase my prices, mm -hmm. uh, which I did. Yeah. And it yeah. forces you when you, when, when all your competitors are discounting their prices and you're raising your prices, it forces you to plant your feet stand your ground and real and recognize your value. Either you're worth the premium price or you're not. If you are, you've, it forces you to sell better and market better. And I, I, really, I really think that that was one of the things that helped me be successful was raising my prices, mm -hmm. being confident in my value, planting my feet, standing my ground and refusing to offer discounts. Oh, that's awesome advice. Yeah. If you discount it, then so will they. <laughs> They'll discount who you are and what you do. And it's, yeah. that's very good. Good sound advice. That's awesome. Well, um, let's talk a little bit more about some resources or some things that uh, our listeners can tap into that you're doing. Uh, we mentioned that you have the university, but let's share with uh, with our people. What can you do? How can they get a hold of you? How can they uh, hire you or uh, listen to your master class? What can they do? Well, right now, um, as my as my gift to you and your your listeners, what I'd be happy to have them do is join actually a special beta group. Uh, we just finished this six week master class. All the modules have been recorded, but we're in that we're still in a pre launch phase where we have not made it yet uh, available to the public. It's not live. It's not uh, it's not available to the public. And so we're still in that feedback phase. And so as many of your listeners who would like to come and join our beta group uh, can go through each one of those six, uh, those six week modules, get access to the master class coaching group. And, and download the PDF workbooks that go along with each one of those uh, 100% for free as, as my gift. Uh, with one caveat, two caveats. Ah. Feedback, 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 and feedback. Before we launch this to the world, uh, we definitely want to hear feedback. What is good? What's spot on? What's helpful? Uh, what isn't? We want to take out the stuff that isn't helpful, and we want to amplify and keep the stuff that is. So we need feedback, 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 feedback. And all that feedback can be left inside the, uh, the Masterclass Facebook group. So people can go to www.hansenuniversity.com forward slash COVID-19, C-O-V-I-D and the number 19. So hansenuniversity.com forward slash COVID-19. There they can just simply add their name. They can just register, add their name to the, uh, uh, the beta group uh, and uh, they'll start receiving some automated emails that come to them with instructions on how to uh, access all of that content, all of those resources. And so if they uh, promise, promise to give me some good feedback, some critique, some evaluation on what's good, what's bad, what's ugly, so that we can make those final edits and roll that out here in several weeks, then uh, I'm confident they'll get a lot of, uh, a lot of value out of that. And it, uh, that'll, that'll be great. We can encourage them to do the five R's, ratings, ranking, uh, referrals, recommendations, reviews, and then rewards, thumbs up on rewards. And hey, by the way, like <laughs> let's, um, let's make sure people know how to spell Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, uh, -E 
from yes, Hansen, yeah, HansenUniversity.com slash COVID-19 for his special beta group. That's amazing. We'll also post that in the Marketing Expedition community if you're, if you're comfortable with that uh, so that they can reach it there as well. And gotcha. uh, we'll, yeah, we'll put the podcast there too and, and it'll get out to the world. Um, okay, one more question for you, Terry. You ready for this? Wait. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay, ready. <laughs> where do you wait, see wait, yourself? Wait. Okay, oh. now I'm ready. Now yeah, I'm really ready. ready. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years right now? Well, I have a, um, I have a, a, a little, uh, after 15 years in business, as a business owner, I've, I've done a lot, seen a lot, experienced a lot. I still yet feel like there's more that I can contribute. And actually, as crazy as it sounds, I'd like to try my hand as a as a as an instructor or a professor at the university level one of the ills that our society has right now is when graduates uh, graduate with a marketing degree i think the statistic is 82 percent of marketing uh marketing graduates uh their first job out of college with this brand new awesome marketing degree is actually a sales job <laughs> now they're lucky in a marketing degree to get one one sales class crazy to think that 80 plus percent of marketing graduates mm -hmm. graduate with zero preparation or zero training and their first job is a sales position. I, I think that is abominable. So I, my goal in the next five years is to spend some time, not all of my time, spend mm -hmm. some of my time at a, at a local university teaching sales uh, courses and classes and helping develop a uh, sales curriculum for universities so that more of our marketing graduates can can be better prepared to enter a, a, a selling, a sell, a, enter the workforce in a sales position rather than being underprepared. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's, I, where, I think that's where that's headed. That's great. And I'm gonna, so I'm teaching a class for a university here in Idaho as an adjunct teacher and for the first time, a professor for the first time. And so I think uh, I will definitely call on you to be a guest speaker because I want to cover sales as well, because I think you're right. People, you know, we're talking about personal branding and how people will need to, um, you know, present and, and now with the job seeking economy the way it is i think that they need to understand that sales is something that everyone has to do every day no matter if it's you're trying to get a new job or you're pitching something or you're selling something or you're 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 convincing your your parents that you need to you know move out of the house and live on your own i don't know <laughs> or right <laughs> uh, or whatever the case might be so i think yeah we'll definitely call on you so you can have a little hand at that and then uh see if you like it for for the one time <laughs> for for my class <laughs> yeah yeah sure. no that's awesome i actually this fall will be finishing up my master's degree knowing that this is kind of on the long-term track i Went back to school and uh, we'll be finishing up my master's degree this year. So, ah, congratulations. That's a lot of work. I, I can speak from experience. It's not <laughs> easy to do a full time it's, job and you know, raise those five kids of yours with your wife. I can only imagine how busy you have been. And congratulations. That's thank you. Be yes. An amazing a, accomplishment for sure. Definitely and did you a focus team effort. On, um, so you have, you'll have an MBA. What's your, what's your focus specifically? Well, actually, I decided not to get an MBA specifically. It's a degree actually from Boise State University over in your neck of the woods yeah. uh, over there called Organizational Performance and Workplace Learning, which oh. is really focused on, if you, think, if you think of what a mechanic does for a car, uh, this degree prepares people to do that same sort of go in, diagnose a problem, figure out what the solution needs to be, and then fix it do that same sort of thing for companies. And that's really at the heart and soul of what salespeople do. Diagnose mm -hmm. a problem, mm -hmm. figure out a good solution, close the sale, and then go implement the solution and fix it. Mm -hmm. And so that the degree is all, uh, is, is actually a, uh, that type of a degree instead. Mm -hmm. so. oh, okay, okay, uh, excellent. Well, that'll be amazing. So you said you're gonna graduate next fall, is that right? Yep. Okay, so hopefully you'll have to, you'll get a real graduation where you actually get to walk down the aisle and throw your <laughs> cap and, you know, we, we've done some virtual graduations lately because <laughs> of COVID, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll root for you and make sure you actually get to walk down the aisle. <laughs> well, that's, that's nice. Awesome. It'll be, a, yeah. it'll be an interesting time for sure. Crazy, crazy times we're in. 
Yep. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your marketing journey with us. And uh, as we go through the expedition of marketing and, and it's always a journey, always a, a something new to discover. And so thank you for sharing your wisdom and your expertise and the offer that we have for our listeners. Um, why don't you hit uh, that offer one more time just so that people um, can remember it and go do it right now. Yeah, you betcha. Uh, my gift to you guys, join our, our uh, beta group, our masterclass beta group as my gift to you. You can go to hansenuniversity.com forward slash COVID-19. That's Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, university.com forward slash COVID-19. Sure appreciate the chance to be here, Ray. You're awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Terry. And thank you to our listeners. Be sure to subscribe. And hey, if you could do the five R's for this uh, podcast, that would be amazing too. Ratings, reviews, <laughs> referrals, you got it and subscribe. So thank you so much. And uh, until next time, uh, enjoy the journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Find more online at peppershock.com. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com 